Joel Thomas. Sean Brownfield. John McQuarrie. I guess we're here to talk about the path of downtown. The path so of downtown. We all have some memories from back in the day when it was the result of the suburban sprawl of the 70s and 80s. So that's that's when I started noticing and paying attention. Still coming down here for a family business and my sister took ballet, but it was just sad and blight is all I remember really. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> some of my earliest memories are just going to the Hearst building. Yeah. With my grandfather's shop. So he was quite uh, quite the dresser. <laughs> and it had an escalator in it. Too. It had an escalator, yeah. I remember yeah. people always talk about the escalator when they were like young. Yeah. I got here in 01 and so, I mean, when you came downtown, you came down for one specific reason and you went to that one place and then once you were done, you went back to Drury was my case, so yeah, you didn't stick around and walk around like you do now. <laughs> yeah. But what do you what do you remember as a kid down here? Um, I was really just like you guys said, it was stuff inside a building. So it was ironically enough a lot of time in the Vandevoort building because my sister took ballet there. But it was not you know it was exactly that it was that building and then going into our family business and it was otherwise there, there was nothing. Not that it was terribly dangerous, but there was, you know, maybe a little bit dangerous and there was just nothing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just empty buildings falling apart, but it's been, you know, even though I don't really have solid memories of, or any memories really of it being the thriving downtown that most American cities were back in the 60s and years before that, I, you know, it's, you know, something you know about, you learn about from, from family members and you kind of strive for that again. Hey, this is... What's developing now is kind of a different version of it. You know, unfortunately, it's not the thriving retail it once was, but you know, there there are more and more people living down here and working down here, and that stuff will come. But it's it's at least comforting to know that there are a lot of people who care about these old buildings and care about the identity of a downtown. Yeah, in Springfield. And that that's one thing that I think is is key: the amount of people that that have like old nostalgic history that are coming back, mm -hmm. either opening businesses, but you get to talking to downtown business owners and they, they generally have a history, you know, down here. So they have a, a passionate tie. Um, and I think, I know for, for me, uh, and then, you know, you and I have talked about it. We've talked about several people, um, but it's, it's not necessarily the best economic decision right. to invest and spend, you know, but then we, we, you equate uh, the passion, the emotion that you have for downtown you know, and then it still has to make fiscal sense. And so right. if it makes fiscal sense, we're going to do it mm -hmm. just because we have that, that old passionate tie to downtown, you know, like everybody else that's, that's revitalizing and working on projects. And so it's, it's fun to be a part of down here. So no, it's, it's a cool community of developers for sure. Yeah. It's just interesting. Like, you know, you look at pictures of like, I, you know, I didn't grow up here. So I look at pictures of like the fifties, probably the last big, you know, events that will happen like maybe in the 50s or 40s you see these like big parades and big festivals downtown and then it seems like from that point till the 90s it was just you know 40 years it just went from nothing yeah. something to nothing and now it's taken almost another 40 years to get it yeah. even back to sniffing that type of oh, activity sure. yeah it's like just crazy fast it degraded i mean it, it's it, it's tough to understand that mindset, but it was a period of 15 years of before everybody left. It was 15 years of, for some reason, trying to cover up all the history. The herd, all these buildings put these facades on, these modern facades, which seems ridiculous to us now. And then they, you know, they left. And I mean, it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just glad that it's culturally everybody's starting to appreciate that again. I think that after 20 years of just strip centers, I think people crave something more, something different. Yeah. Well, it's, downtown's a lot more human. Yeah. The human element of these old buildings with these details that you, you know, were covered up and taking these facades down and, and revealing these cool details, you know, intric intricate details that were once something that people were proud of and now yeah. they can be proud of it again. Man, I think, uh, you know, we've had so many years now this this huge uprising of big box stores and franchises and chains and things that pop up you know not too far from you overnight and i don't know it's like you know they, they reek of efficiency um you know i think people are starting to appreciate craftsmanship and quality 
and un unfortunately you just can't afford to do it these days and so you come back to an area where it was done a mm -hmm. hundred years ago well now you can appreciate it now mm -hmm. you've got that craftsmanship the detail good bones the yeah yeah those those things that you know all of us have a family member whether it was a father or a grandfather or an uncle that worked as a brick mason mm -hmm. or you know these guys you know spent hours on little tiny details that right you know, today would not be affordable mm -hmm. you know so well you don't got a lot of guys taking old walmarts and turning them into cool places like this <laughs> yeah <I> mean, <laughs> they just sit there and they eventually become something but yeah yeah no they go just plow them down yeah or they plow them they plow them down and start over so but you don't do that with an old building and, and you know you can prevent it if it's safe and whatnot but. and I, I think that that's that was maybe one of the first sparks of bringing interest downtown because it's you know like you said it's never it's never easy and it's it doesn't make as much physical sense of doing the same thing a fresh build somewhere else in town where there's more room and you know you're not crawling over other businesses neighbors but uh, I think that 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 sense of, of uh, you know I, I think that for towns our size especially in the Midwest, you know, we just, we crave culture, and that's why these new things, you know, starting with, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like that Josh at Scotch and Soda was a bit of a pioneer, at least for this latest phase of what's happening, yeah. uh, doing something truly high-end and something truly unique, and people told him he was crazy, but that demand is there. People crave culture, and I think that that's what, you know, the, it's the, the ability of, of some people that, they took some risks, but that turned out that demand was there. So, started out with some early bars and restaurants down here, and that started trickling, and then people started moving in down here. And you know, it, it just it takes a while for that to build on itself. But you know, it's things are just cranking now. Twenty fifteen, that's that's a banner year for downtown yeah. in so many ways. And that, that was a resurgence I saw it as being in college during the early two thousands. Was people were able to take these great buildings that had great bones. Buy them for cheap, right? Throw a bar in it, right? Make a bunch of money, right? And so yeah, it, downtown kind of became this college atmosphere, but I think that eventually led to people going, you know what? I think I could do something cool like a Scotch and Soda, a different feel than just a college bar, yeah. But still make money, and they're kind of, you know, the the old college bars are starting to kind of weed themselves out, yeah. Like these new, more upscale establishments kind of, right? Starting up. It's no longer a college entertainment district. Correct. I mean, it still is that, of course, but not exclusively anymore. I was thinking about, I had a lot of chance to sit with, with uh, Tom Billions when he opened coffee. You think nine years ago, you know, opening a high-end coffee shop mm -hmm. that your, your focus and goal was to sell as many cups as possible, to sell the, the highest quality product, you know, and then you're in a, in a very square. depressed area <laughs> on the mm -hmm. square, no parking. Um, Yes, yeah, so I think like as far as visionaries downtown, um, man, he sweat a lot of years, yeah. um, and I mean he just hung in there. Uh, his family stuck by him, and you know, so that's kind of a you know cool thing. But you know then it's like you have you know the people come in, and he was a huge inspiration you know to me, Josh Widener, and myself included for yeah. sure. So you get to looking at these cool things that are popping up, and it's it's contagious. Yeah. Um, you know these guys that put a little wind in your sail, like okay, you know, okay, I think I'm willing to. Willing to do it, but right. uh, you see their risk, and you think, "Yeah, I can do that." Yeah, and that, that that's something that always floated in my head. I, you know, Tom, I, I considered him. He's the pioneer of the new generation of, of downtown developers at the stage uh, for us, certainly. But uh, something that gave me comfort with what we were doing at the hotel was, okay, well, yeah, this is a financial risk for sure, but. At least if it failed, I feel like I was trying to do something that had some worth. Yeah. You know, yeah. if I if I just opened up some franchise of in whatever industry uh, on the south side of town and it failed, you know, that just seems kind of soulless. But at least you know you failed trying to do something you feel like has some worth. Yeah. You left a valuable no. footprint. Yeah. And like a, almost like a noble deed. <laughs> like yeah. Laying your hand on the sword. And I, I just I think that that sentiment is is shared you know, obviously uh -huh. because it takes, you know it's if you're doing something down here you're going to be doing something different. Just being in this place means that you have to take some there's some inherent risk just in that regardless of what business it is. So um, everybody, you know there's 
there's heart down here and there's uh, a lot of critic. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But we're changing that. You know, we're changing that. So mm -hmm. it, it's nice to see people that haven't been downtown in years. You know, we have people in the barbershop every day that, you know, talk about, you know, it's been years since I've been downtown. And, you know, so been able to have places like the Band of Board, you know, they come and have a wonderful dinner and, you know, get a haircut, and have a nice drink. And, you know, it's, it's changing their perception, mm -hmm. you know, of downtown and, you know, they're visiting more frequently and whatnot. And we're sorry. It's like, you look at that, that pie of, you know, what it takes to run a downtown and we've got all the elements to make a successful downtown. It, it may not be that we have the, the right portions you right. Know, yet. We need, definitely need more retail. Yeah, um, yeah get that's more it. Retail, but, that's it. Yeah, that's but it, it's one, getting though. it's getting harder to find good quality downtown buildings at Arnie that yep. people don't already own. Because right. as yep. soon as one comes on the market, it usually right. is off the market pretty quick. It's a good yeah. problem to have in a lot of ways. Just as long as you have the people developing it in the right direction that yep. downtown needs. Yeah, we well, just have we have the issue of rent prices because so many people have done restaurants and bars mm -hmm. yet have high profit margins. It, it's hard for retail to come in and pay those those per square foot prices. That they're able to get from a restaurant or a bar, you know, when you're selling retail. So, I don't know. I don't know how to solve that one, but you're figured out. I'm curious to jump into it for sure. Yeah. Downtown Springfield. Downtown Springfield, guys.